Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another Visual Basics tutorial to view get an A in your course of a core exam. And today we're here with editing a record from a CSV all text file. So let's hop right into it. So you want to make yourselves a function. We're going to call it edit record. It's going to be return a boolean, true or false. We want to pass in a bunch of by value strings. The first one's the file path. What's the file we want to edit a record in? Then the second one is the edit term, and we'll go back to what that actually means in a moment, but that's going to be a string. The delimiter, what separates each field of a record? In most cases it's a comma, but the flexibility is there for something else. Then we have the edit term position. So, we have a little text file here. We've got three records, each record has three fields, the ID, the name, and the age. So, an edit term is simply something we're looking for in a record which will flag it as something we want to edit. An edit term position is which field of that record is the edit term in. And let's give an example. Let's say our edit term is Pato. Okay? So we're looking for any record with Pato in it. So what would we pass in? Well, we'd pass in number two because 1111 is in position one and Pato is in position two. So we'd pass in, the edit term would be Pato and the edit term position would be the number two and that's an integer. So let's say you want to find someone who has the age of 32, let's say. So we'd pass in 32 as a string in the edit term, and we pass in the number 3 in the edit term position as an integer, because it's the third field of a record, this 32. Because it's an H. I hope that's helped clear any understanding of what that is. If not, ask in the comments. Then we simply got field 1, field 2, and field 3. And these all have the words new in front of them. So when we edit a record, we want data to replace that record. So in this example, we're going to be completely overwriting that record and giving it new data. You could simply choose not to overwrite everything and keep some parts of that record. The options there if you want to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do edit term position minus equals one. So why are we doing that? Well, with my example before, when I was looking at the positioning of where fields were in the record, I didn't factor in that this will be treated like an array, so the first index is actually 0 and not a 1. So essentially you have to minus 1 from the examples I was giving before. However, I've decided to do it this way to make the function more human friendly. You think that this Pato is the second record, not the first record, which happens to be the second record. So I have the, func the function just subtract 1 to make it array friendly. But to someone who's just calling the function, they don't need to think about that. They need to think, okay, Pato is the second field. I'm going to put in a 2. I'm not going to subtract a 1 in my head. And that's basically the aim of this, to make it simple. If you don't want to do this, you don't actually have to. You can simply put in the array index position as opposed to a human position and then not do edit term position minus equals one if you want to. Now we're going to declare a few things in memory. Dim edited record as boolean equals false. This variable will tell us if the record was edited or not, so we can return this to wherever the function's called. When we edit the record, we will change this to true. Temp file, temp file .txt. Dim current line as string, that's the current line we're reading. And new record's gonna be the record that replaces the record we want to edit. And then we just add all the fields and delimiters together. Next we want to do a try catch. Try a chunk of code. If something goes wrong, execute what's in the exception in the catch code. So in this case, we're going to do console.writeLineEx, which means the error that occurs will be captured in EX and we will print it out to see what's going on. However, 
you shouldn't encounter any errors, but it's handy to have just in case you do, like a file's missing or something like array index out of bound. And now we're going to do, in the try statement, so the code we're going to try and do, and hope that it does go well. Dim file reader as new system.io.streamwriter and file path. File path is our original file. Then we got file writer, new system.io stream writer temp file and true. So we're reading from the old file, but we're going to be writing to the temp file. So we edit a record by actually using two files. And we're migrating all the data apart from the data we want to edit to this new file and then adding in the new data we want to change for the records we want to edit to the new file. So, what we do is we loop through our current file, which is file path. And any record we don't want to edit, we write it to temp.txt. When we get to a record we want to edit, we instead write the new record to temp.txt. We do this until we've gone through every line of the file to make sure we've got we've covered every record. Once we've written every record to temp.txt, we delete the current file. And temp.txt will be renamed to whatever the old file was, giving the illusion we've only changed a record or two, but in reality we've made a whole new file and then just renamed it. In fact, occasionally when you see this occurring in Windows in the File Explorer, you might sometimes see a temp, a temp file appear and then disappear because that's what's happening. So, and that's why we are reading from the original file, but we're writing to the new file, which is called temp.txt. We pass true in here because we want to append to a file. Now we've got a little chunky do while loop. So I'm going to break this down. Don't worry. Do while. This means loop while a certain condition is true. File reader dot peak arrow thingies and minus one. What does this mean? This essentially means loop through this while there is still a line that we have yet to read. This will become false when there are no more lines to read. But as long as there's another line in the file to read, this becomes true and therefore we can loop through this code. Current line equals file reader dot read line. That explains what it does. Dim current record array, which is a string array, and it's going to be split current line and delimiter. So we're going to get the current line. And then we're going to put each field of that line, because it, each line's its own record, into a string array. So we can interact with each element individually. And we're using the delimiter to know where to split each part of the uh, string into this a little array that we've got. And then we're going to do if not string dot compare current record index edit term position and edit term equals zero then file writer dot write line current line. So what does this line of code actually do? Well firstly I apologize if it looks weird. This is Visual Basic. It looks nicer in Java and C Sharp and C++. But essentially what we're doing is not basically means do the opposite. So currently we've got string.compare, current record equals edit term position and edit term equals zero. We're basically checking, does the field in the edit term position match the edit term? Because equaling to zero means is it true, equaling to one means is it false, because zero is true, one is false. That's basic Boolean algebra. But since we're putting not before it, we're checking for a false. So we're actually checking if the current record has a f the field at the edit term position is not equal to the edit term, meaning this is a record which doesn't match the criteria to be edited, and therefore we don't want to edit it, we want to leave it alone. So we do file writer dot write line, current line. We're just writing the current record to the temp file. Otherwise, else, we're going to write the new record, which is here, because the current record we're reading clearly matches the criteria to be a record we want to edit. And then we do edit record equals true. This won't terminate the loop if there's more records we want to edit. But it will tell the function that we have edited a record. 
And that's essentially what this loop does. After the loop, we want to do file writer.close and file reader.close. We want to close them to prevent any potential issues occurring. Then we do my.computer.filesystem.delete file path. We are deleting the old file. Then we do my.computer.filesystem.rename temp file and file path. This renames temp file to be what the file name is file path, which is a string here. So while we deleted the file with that file path, that file path is its own string, so we can still refer to it even after deleting the file, it's file associated with that name. And after that try catch, we return edit, edited record, which is this boolean. We can simply use this to return if that record was edited or not. This would be handy for some programs. Right, so we have got a, in our main function at the very top, if you're wondering what all this other code is, it's previous tutorials. There'll be an I up in the corner for a playlist of all our Visual Basic file handling. I strongly recommend you watch them if you have these coming up in your exam or coursework. So we've got a console.write line. And we're going to call an, our edit record function. So this console is going to write true or false because that's what's going to be returned. And we're passing the file test.txt. And we want to edit a record with the ID of 3243. So if we go to our test.txt, 3243 is the first field of a record. And we obviously pass in a comma, so we pass in a 1 because it's the first field. This will become 0 in the function, but this makes it more human readable. And then we want to pass in the new data we want to overwrite that record with. So 5567 for the new ID, Jerry Jojo Jr. Shabadoo for the new name, and 45 for the new age. Once again, this is the current record, this is the current file right now, and this field, no, th this record is going to be different. All three fields are going to be different in this record. So we're going to close test.txt. If you're wondering where your text file ends up by default, it's in your bin debug folder for your Visual Basic project. You can change this if you want to, but I'm lazy. Let's click play. As you can see, it's printed true. Printing true means a record must have been edited somewhere. Let's close the program and inspect the new file. As you can see, the first two records have remained unchanged. They are just as they should be. But if we look at here, we got 5567, Joey Jojo Jr. Shabadoo and 45. Those are the values we wanted to add in place of that old record with the ID of 3243. Therefore, the code works. So, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. And thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.